Pip, Pip, Tally Ho. Jules Guides here, in which I wander around London and tell you fascinating facts. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you like these videos and hit the little bell because that will notify you when I upload a new video. And you can even go to my website and buy my book and all my tasteful merchandise, which is on there. Now, I know I normally walk around London, but uh, today's a bit of a little outing. Out, uh, it's like a day trip away from London. We've come to St Albans. So um, yeah, it might not be quite as in-depth as some of my London stuff, but it's more of like a, a little touristy day trip away. And we're starting here outside the St Albans Registry Office, which you might recognise from Porridge, the TV series. Simon, look, with Ronnie Barker. That's Her Majesty's Prison Slade. That's the, the Slade Prison. Norman Stanley Fletcher, you have pleaded guilty to the crimes and it is now my duty to pass sentence. I was really scared of that as a kid. And now look at it, it looks like an ideal English country house, doesn't it? Remember hold them and hold them and hold them and remember hold them and my time is spent. Remember I want to come down here because I've got this lovely little place where they, this, this used to be a railway track so there's some Albans to uh, Hatfield Railway between 1865 and 1951. There were trains going along here, but now it's just like a bicycle path and lovely walkways. I thought we should walk along here, Simon, because there's a nice little, nice little spot. Still, I mean, you can still probably walk all the way it's six miles long. Yeah. Now it's mostly joggers and cyclists and stuff, but I think it's a rather pleasant route. That's why we've come around that way instead of going straight into the centre. Look at this, Simon. Look, this is the old London Road Station. Between 1865 and 1951, people would just be standing here waiting for the train. Yeah, that's right. yeah it's, a, it's beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. Now it's a nursery though, so we shouldn't hang around too long filming. I'm glad that they didn't turn it into luxury flats. Waiting for the train that never comes. Remember God's goodness, O oh thou man, O oh thou man. Remember God's goodness and promise me. I mean, there's some lovely buildings along here. So that's what I love about St Albans. You see all these lovely old stuff. Um, actually, along here, London Road, this is, uh, this is where there used to be the pasta foods factory, where, do you remember, uh, there, there was, they did this thing, I think it was Panorama on the BBC, they did this April Fool's Day hoax, where they pretended that spaghetti was growing on trees. And, I, and they sort of, they were hard, had all these people harvesting the spaghetti. It was filmed at the pasta foods factory down here. But what I really like down here is this, look, this lovely around this little, behind this hedge in a second time. And look, you can see the Odyssey cinema. Originally, this was built in 1904, not in this sort of style, but there was a fella called Arthur Melbourne Cooper who was, he was a pioneer of filmmaking. I mean, he, he, I think he developed some of the first stop motion films. And uh, anyway, he built this uh, lovely cinema here. I think it went through a few, a few changes and everything throughout its existence. It, it, it had a, a restaurant, I think it had a swimming pool there, 800 seats, the Rolling Stones played there, Bo Diddley, the Everly Brothers, you know, it was a... But ultimately it closed down as a cinema in 1995 after showing Waterworld. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think a lot of, I think that put pay to a lot of cinemas actually for all the, for all Waterworld. It didn't do very well, you know. Is it Kevin Costner? It's the local council here, they wanted to flatten it. They want to knock it down. Anyway, luckily, someone came in and said, no, we will refurbish it. Refurbish, and restore turn, it. Yeah, yeah, restore it. And now they've, re they've restored it into a beautiful cinema now, so we can, we can go inside and have a look. Oh, excellent. So, what's your name again? I'm June. June, excellent, otherwise known as Barbie. Yeah, and uh, lots of other um, characters that I've been. I've been a Catwoman, oh, I've really? been Ariel. I'm been so annoyed Snow. that I missed you as Barbie. That's such a pity. <laughs> Oh, you were going to tell me, why is it called the Odyssey? The Odyssey, it was named after Stanley Kubrick's 2001 Space Odyssey. Stanley Kubrick is from St Albans. Is he? Yeah. And we actually have his relative that comes in and watches the films as oh, well. Oh, brilliant. Yeah. Wait a minute, these are your own personal Barbies? These are all my Barbies. Your Barbie collection? Yeah. I have so, over 300. That one is uh, the discontinued one. Um, they didn't think Barbie was appropriate for uh, a Barbie to be pregnant, so... Yeah. She uh, was quickly discontinued. But she's in the she's in the film, isn't she? She's yeah, in the she's film, in Bob. The film, yeah. Oh, it's amazing that you've got yeah. all these. And we've got Alan, who um, he's Ken's best friend. Oh, that's a proper rail. one, like in yeah. uh, like in Colombo, when yeah. the guy he puts the penny on there somewhere yeah. and it, it drops off or something. 
It's James Hannaway. He runs the Rex in Berkhamsted. Right. And he rescued that cinema as well. Oh. And a lot of people from St Albans were slightly jealous that Berkhamsted had its own cinema. So they campaigned and James rescued it through fundraising. So God's goodness and promise made. Remember God's goodness, his only son. He sent our sins for to redress. Be not afraid. Anything about St Albans, there do seem to be a lot of busy roads going through it. Actually, I mean, that London road that we went down just now, that was originally the old Watling Street, Roman Road. The Battle of Watling Street, you remember, Simon? You know, there was, where um, there was a famous Battle of Watling Street where Queen Queen Boudicca or Boadicea she ordered for St Albans. Well, it was Verulamium back then. It was an old Roman town of Verulamium. She ordered for it to be sacked and burnt to the ground. Um, but look, look at this—a stink pipe. Excellent. Let's cross over. Actually, this is Hatfield Road we're approaching now because we saw that. The, the railway that went from St Albans to Hatfield. Didn't really, but look, a stink pipe. Excellent. That's, that's probably, I wonder how old that paint is. It's probably original, what do you reckon? Look at that. Engineers, Ham, Bakers and Co. Westminster, look at that, made in Westminster, that. Anyway, I do like a stink pipe. Points to me, points to me. But anyway, yeah, so as we approach the centre of St Albans, we'll probably notice more coaching inns and pubs and stuff because uh, St Normans was the first uh, major town I suppose um, when you go north out of London and so a lot of the money they made here was through um, through coaching sort of inns and stuff like that so that's, that's how they earned their living a lot of people Yeah, we're in, we've come down to Clarence Park here. And we've, got, we've got a lovely cricket. Look at that lovely cricket pavilion over there. That was the St Albans Cricket Club or something. They, they, that first saw a cricket match in 1875. And um, behind me, look, this is, I love these, a turnstile for St Albans FC. They've existed since uh, 1908. But um, I love these little grounds, you know. Sometimes you see them in the FA Cup, you know, if they do particularly well. And um, in, but what was amazing is in 1989, there was a really famous match that took place here because it was all these ex-footballers, like ex-World Cup winners. It was a charity game um, instigated by Bobby Moore, the England captain who held the, who held the World Cup aloft, you know, him and a guy called John Mitchell. Um, they decided to do a charity football match uh, between, well, it was on one side, it was Arsenal and Tottenham sort of ex-players, and then they were playing against sort of the Panini All-Stars, and they had people like Ozzy Ardiles, Alan Ball, Martin Peters, Franz Beckenbauer and uh, Pat Jennings. Kevin Keegan and Bobby Moore brought out George Best on a stretcher. So he came out on a stretcher oh. to play, but I think it was 6-5 to uh, Tottenham and Arsenal, 11 they were called. Marvellous, eh? Marvellous. Jumpers for goalposts, eh, Simon? Oranges at half-time, outside of the foot. Lovely top corner, marvellous, eh? Marvellous. Well, so look, the Peacock pub, they've got the mermaid over there, Simon. Yeah. The Peacock here, so there's all these pubs, and we should count how many pubs there are. <clears throat> Amazing for a pub crawl. Did you used to do those? Well, I, I was a student down in Hatfield for a few years, back in oh, the 90s. Yeah. So we, we've come up here every so often. Bet there were more pubs back then. Oh, of course there were. There were more back then. And uh... <laughs> <laughs> look, yeah. at, look at that. Ah, look. yes. Look, it's a, a beautiful, a beautiful uh, point to this. Yeah. A milestone, a metal one, so it's not, it's not as old as those stone ones you get, but still. Eight miles to Watford. Oh, you see this place coming up over here? <laughs> The Via Dara um, Curry House. This is where Tom Cruise is known to have gone in here and ordered lobster and chicken tikka masala. It's true. He's famous. He was spotted in there. <laughs> so it's good enough for Tom Cruise. It's good enough for us. So I imagine he would have bought the the meal when he was shooting the film Eyes Wide Shut with Stanley Kubrick. Really? How do you know it wasn't 
when he was filming Cocktail. Because I think, <laughs> I think it, I'm pretty sure that's when he, he was staying around here at the time. Look, it's right opposite these almshouses. Almshouses always seem to look like that, don't they? Around a garden. Very spacious. Yeah. I mean, I suppose it's significant that they were built in 1734. There's so many old things around here in St Albans, though, as you will find out soon. The angels all to sing for the man hold them. The angels all to sing from Zion Hill. The angels all to sing place to our heavenly king and peace to man. Like I was saying, there's a lot of old buildings in St Albans. I mean, this is... St. Peter's Church. I mean, it's under renovation at the moment, so we can't really go in, but that was built in 948. It's over a thousand years old. I think some of the bits have been redone, actually. Ancient church. Look at that. For several hundred years, St. Peter's Churchyard had a resident anchoress, a religious recluse. <laughs> the one in residence in 1258 had a vision of an old man with a long beard at the top of the tower crying, woe to all the inhabitants of the earth. She then predicted the famine that followed. The cell, or anchorage, into which she was sealed to devote herself to a life of prayer is likely to have been close to this spot, the east end of the church building. <laughs> Look at her, looking through the window. The anchoress, mm. the medieval anchoress. But of course, uh, the most important thing about it is that it's where Bianca and Ricky get married in EastEnders. <laughs> oh, for goodness sake. And it's set in lovely gardens here, I have to say. I, mean, I do like it around it. I mean, look, I know that Jules Guides is supposed to be about London, but I'm sure that if you got a Ryanair flight, they would probably claim it was London. I mean, they claim Luton is London on Ryanair, and Luton is further <laughs> away from London than St Albans. So let's have a look at the gardens here. It's so nice. And maybe climb a tree. Look at how that is a climbable tree if ever I saw one. Look at that, eh? Oh, when I was younger. I'd have loved a tree like that, wouldn't you? Anything. Well, Look. it's just begging to be climbed on, isn't it? Yeah, it really it. is. How come yeah. there's no kids in it now? St Albans is quite useful in pub quizzes and things, or when you're watching Pointless, you know, on BBC Two or BBC One or whatever. Because they always say, oh, name a, a city, la, 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 la. And, and, and a lot of people don't realise that St Albans is a city. It acquired city status in 1877. This is at, well, the museum here. This is their town hall and courthouse. Actually, you can go inside and still see. They've turned it into a cafe. It's really cool. You go inside and sit where people have actually been condemned. Norman Stanley Fletcher, you have pleaded guilty to the offences brought against you. It's now my duty. You'll be led straight down from your cell, straight up into the dock. And uh, have a cup of tea and a crumpet. Oh, how lovely. Right. It was done in the neoclassical style, but it was actually built in 1826, as if you cared. Along here, actually, today is a Thursday, so they don't have the market. But if you come back on a Wednesday or a Saturday, they've got a big market here, which has been going since, like, 1553 or so, when I think King Edward VI, he's the son of King Henry VIII. He granted the people the right to hold a market twice a week here. So since 1553, they've been doing it. It's quite nice. Do you know what fills me with joy, Simon? What's Do that, you know Julian? What, a little part of me leaps with joy when I see an old building like that. I see Lloyd's Bank, and it says bank in the brickwork. Yeah, see what I mean? Nice, isn't it? It's yeah. nice there. You know that that was originally a bank, and it still is. You know. Yeah. It's just you don't get that very often. And these it looks days. like a bank. It looks like yeah. a proper bank. Sturdy, strong classicism. You name yeah. it. It's got all the boxes ticked. To Bethlehem did they go, old oh, man, old oh, man. To Bethlehem did they go. So we're back on London Road here. But I'm pretty sure this is the one that goes all the way down to London. It used to, it used to be the famous Roman Road, Watling Street, which, um, I mean, after the, the Romans ultimately left in 450 AD. But, um, but along London Road is one of the best picture framers in the world, in the world, and art gallery, and art gallery. Why? Because it's Marks and Tilts. <laughs> it's my friend. Ralphs, he, he runs this place, and what is more importantly is that Simon is doing an exhibition in here. Let's go inside. 
Hi Jules, welcome to Marks and Tilts. Hi <laughs> old chap. Hi there old fella. Um, so yeah, we've got a brilliant exhibition going on this evening. Well, it's just a private view for Alex Edward, also known as Simon, your cameraman. <laughs> uh, and these are his beautiful paintings, original paintings of St Albans, various views. That's just taking advantage of shapes, that's not even colour in contrast. You did all of these? Yes, I did, yes. Yeah, okay, well tell me about them then. Okay, well these are, <laughs> these are oil paintings that I've, I've created for this exhibit here in uh, St Albans at Marks and Tilt. And uh, yeah, hopefully people will come and see them and like them and buy them. All right, so they can get them online and... Uh... Get them online, get prints online, all that. So I noticed that there's no people in any of these. No, it's just that I don't want people in my paintings. I want people to see the environment and I want people to feel that they can join the environment. And so here's our little framing workshop. Here's some frames we're working on. It's one we've just finished. It's beautiful Ben Ein Jay for my son, who's called James. Excellent. Nice piece of uh, stained oak, black stained oak. I really like that one because he's taken a telephone tape, which makes you sneak <laughs> Which one is your favourite? The public toilet. I feel like I can just, I can use it, you know? I yeah. Right You'll I'm be like, lucky. There it is. Only if you have a 20 pence piece on you. <laughs> But you also do pictures of a lot of sorts of places, don't you? I do indeed, yes. I'm working on other places at the moment, like Hampstead and Ipswich and Woodbridge and Framingham. Mm. So there's a lot in the works at the moment. People are always wondering about what you do when you're not doing Jules Guide, Simon. <laughs> <laughs> so this clock tower here, I mean, this was completed in 1405. They say it's the only surviving medieval belfry in England. They've got a bell up there, which is called Gabriel, which is like 600 years old. It's amazing. I mean, it still works. And it, it would have been the same one that they rang in the Battle of St Albans, which is one of the Wars of the Roses. <laughs> it's like amazing that you can hear the same bell being rung. Quite incredible. There used to be one of those, you know, I'm always going on about those Eleanor Crosses. You know, when King, King Edward Longshanks, Edward I, the, the guy out of Braveheart, when his wife died, and she was called um, Eleanor of Castile, she died, I think it was in Lincoln, and then when they brought her coffin to London, they, ever, wherever they rested, they built a cross. And one of those, the last one is Charing Cross, there's one in Waltham Cross. Anyway, one of those crosses was uh, presumably right here, like where, where that lamppost is or something. Look at those. I love those. Now, they're not gargoyles, they're grotesques aren't they, those Grotesque. things? Grotesques, because they don't have water coming out of them. I think it's for hobbits, this. Commit no nuisance. That means don't pee against this gate <laughs> <laughs> for an idea of scale. That door is six foot, by the way, if anybody's <laughs> trying to guess that. Yeah. That's how tall Julian is. But so they even had, later on, during the Napoleonic Wars, they actually had a semaphore station here. So if you get to the top of that, it's quite interesting because you can see all the way to... I think the next one's in Boreham Wood. Apparently they could send a signal from the south coast. Well, like semaphore. Yeah, like yeah, well, like... yeah, obviously on a sunny day it didn't work. But during Napoleonic times they could say... Look, well, and yeah. they could send a signal from the south coast, Portsmouth, to the east coast in 15 minutes. Gold. This is the boot pub. So I think from like 1200 and something. Yeah, but it wasn't used as a pub, it was used as a smokehouse. So what you want to do there, right, is you want to okay. plane that off. Use a bit of four by two. Bit of scaffold, you know, bit of an acro. Get an acro prop under it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some really nice things though. It's a really kind of cool shop. Hello! <laughs> what sort of stuff are you selling in here? Oh, furniture, small antiques, mixed gifts, all sorts of things really. Oh, you've been here long. 70 years. 70 years? Not you personally, presumably. <laughs> Goodness gracious. I was eight when I came here. We opened in 1955. We specialise now in old and in indeterminate things of, of whatever age. But we concentrate on nice things that are, for the most part, affordable. As this sink from filling it full of wondrous things that look marvellous, but no one can afford. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's very sensible. All hail to the days that merit more praise than all the rest of the year. And welcome the nights that double delights as well for the poor as the peer. This is the famous Verdun tree. Verdun is a place in uh, France or Belgium? France, I think, I don't know. Anyway, in the First World War, um, 
It was that the Battle of Verdun was one of the most bloody battles in the First World War in 1916 and they completely flattened the whole area. Well, apparently one of the last trees standing at the Battle of Verdun, I think they obliterated all the trees. Yeah. And one of the last conkers that were available was brought back here and planted. If you plant a conker, does that grow a tree? Yeah. Really? Yeah. That's the seed of the tree, darling. Yeah. So this is related to one of the trees in Verdun. Fancy a game of conkers? Look, there you go. Oh, no, that's a bit of a rubbish one. That's that's a, okay, that's your one, Simon. Oh, yeah. that, that one's Thanks. for you. <laughs> we'll find one for me. <laughs> soak it in vinegar, put it in the oven for a couple of hours. No, I know, but, but some people don't even know what it is. You put a shoelace on there and you have to smash the other person's conker. Do they play that in other countries? Is that done everywhere? I challenge, I challenge Six, you to a game. All right. When was the last time well, you played Conkers? It wasn't actually that long ago. Yeah. <laughs> Good fortune attend each merry man's friend, the dove but the best he may. Forgetting all wrongs with carols and songs to drive the cold wind. Who's Samuel Ryder? Oh, is Samuel that owned Ryder. by the guy who came second in the Eurovision Song Contest, Sam Ryder? No, who different, I met. different Sam Ryder. <laughs> I've seen uh, you, you meeting Samuel Ryder. No, this Samuel Ryder um, founded the Ryder Cup is still played to this day, the gold, oh, that gold the golf, trophy, the golf the trophy. trophy trophy. But actually in his day job, he worked from here as a seed merchant. So he was the first person to put seeds in packets, post them all over the world. Oh, wow. I guess in the 1920s, that building says 1911. I think he was working there. Well, so his office is just in the front of there, still preserved today as part of the hotel. This is clearly an art deco building. And it was a greenhouse, what a beautiful greenhouse. Uh, and this was, yeah, where he worked. How about I imagine that? he had a sort of quite good uh, sort of mashy niblick shot. Beautiful building. What about that building down there? And that is apparently the oldest dwelling, I think from 1470. I know the chat, he, um, it's called Crispin House. And it, we framed some of the original plans. So it's really old. It used to be a pub. So he, he framed a picture of um, it, it got smashed in by a truck, rolled down the hill and went, it was like a Watlings pub. And it crashed into the front of the, the building and knocked out all the windows. But, um, yeah, yeah, now it's just a residence. Look at that, Simon. That is St Albans Cathedral, or Abbey. I mean, it used to be St Albans Abbey, I suppose. It became cathedral in 1877 when St Albans acquired its city status. But originally, it dates to the 8th century, although a lot of it is Norman. I think it's had some repairs, but I think most of it that you can see is probably from the uh, 11th century. Now, according to the Venerable Bede, St. Alban is buried somewhere around here. And the St. Alban, well, it started back in the 4th century. He, he was a fellow who lived in Verulamium, which is the, the Roman town, the old Roman town which was around here. And um, he met this priest called Amphibolus, who was fleeing persecution. And St. Alban was so impressed by the piety of this priest that he decided to convert to Christianity himself. And when the soldiers came knocking, looking for Amphibolus, he said, I'll tell you what, let, hand me a cloak, I'll pretend to be you. So he donned the priest's cloak and they arrested him instead. And he refused to recant his beliefs and uh, then he was executed. And they say that he, I mean, I don't know if this is true, but they say that the, the fella, the soldier, he chopped his head off and his head rolled down the hill here and when it arrived at the bottom, a spring <laughs> sprung up. <laughs> they also say that the soldier's eyes popped out of his head as he, as he decapitated him. So he sort of, it's a bit like in a, in a cartoon. He sort of, sort of went... <laughs> 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 I mean, that's, that's apparently what they say happened. I mean, a, there uh, are many stories surrounding yeah. St Alban, but anyway, they say he's, he's buried somewhere around here. And, I mean, don't forget the most important part of this whole story is that... Uh, it was inside this church that Johnny English was filmed when they tried to crown John Malkovich as king. You know, John Malkovich, he comes from France in Johnny. Have you seen Johnny English? No. Oh, Rowan Atkinson, it's all ridiculous. John Malkovich is getting very angry because he wants to become king of England and they're about to crown him as king inside there. Now, I've, I've heard of these, but I've never seen one. This is from an original 1660 poor box. Remember the poor, please give generously. It says private. Probably.
probably shouldn't go up here because it says private. Oh, but anyway, it does. It does yeah, it says private. Oh, yes, but it's a lovely looking oh, place. Look at that. Wonderful. Wonderful. Anyway, look. This is the great gateway to the monastery. The monastery, I mean, I suppose St Albans owns its whole existence to the monastery. It's one of the first places existed here. This is from 1385, one of the last Benedictine buildings left here, apart from the abbey. Actually, it was here that the hot cross bun was invented, some oh, people claim. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Brother Thomas Rockcliffe, he developed it 1381, they say. He was uh, handing them out on Good Friday. That was the same year as the Peasants' Revolt, during which this was besieged. And just next to it is it's one of the oldest public schools in England, this, St Albans School. Members of the, of the zombies went there. Some of the, you know, the band. Please don't bother trying to find her, she's not there. Oh, you know about the way she moves, the way she acted, the colour of her hair. You don't know that song? And also Stephen Hawking actually originally went to the girls' school because they accepted boys for a while, but then, then, he, then he went here. It's 948, one of the oldest schools. But uh, also the only, the only school to have educated an English pope. <laughs> the pope, Pope Adrian IV, who was the only Englishman to be pope between 1154 and 1159. I always wonder about all these bits of graffiti on here. Yeah. wonder how old these really are. Yeah, some of them will be recent. Stephen Hawking's on yeah, there somewhere. Stephen yeah. Hawking, yeah. Yeah, it's like some of them will be from ages ago, yeah. 1990. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They should try and put in the dates. But look at it, look at the stone. Look at the flint there. Amazing, look at all this stuff. I love that. Now look, just down here, look, I'm not gonna, we're not gonna walk that way. Now you can, if you like, take a lovely stroll down Fishpool Street. It's a really nice walk, beautiful old houses. And uh, you'll wind up right at the bottom where we're gonna go, but we're going that way. The court in all state now opens her gate and bids a free welcome to most. The city likewise, though somewhat precise, doth willingly part with her car. So we've just walked down the hill from the abbey down towards St the Park here. It's beautiful down here by the river. You know, I think this is the one where uh, St Albans head is the legend has it, his head rolled down and it, it sprung a spring here, I guess. Anyway, it's right in front of this excellent old pub. The old fighting cocks actually claims to have been the oldest in England. I think it was one of the ones that claims to be. I mean, the, there's always people arguing about which is the oldest, but there has been a pub on this site since like the eighth century, which is quite extraordinary. Yeah, so I don't know when all this part is. This part's probably. It's all hobbled and cobbled together yeah, through probably, the ages. Yeah, look, fighting 17th, 18th century, big bowl of porridge. Anyway, look, it's old, all right. This is where Oliver Cromwell is reputed to have stayed during the Civil War, stabling his horse in what is now thought to be the bar area. Yeah, they apparently they have tunnels that lead from underneath here all the way over to the Abbey. I <laughs> look at that crooked chimney up there, it's so good. This reminds me of that poem. There was a crooked man and he walked a crooked mile, found a crooked sixpence, sixpence by a crooked style. He bought a crooked cat which caught a crooked mouse. They all lived together in a crooked little house. <laughs> <Is that it? laughs> the fella told me the other day that there were otters living in here, baby otters, but I couldn't see any of them. Let's pop down here. Be careful, Simon, you don't slip here. I think um, I might just go paddle a little bit in here. Roll up my trouser legs. Yeah. <laughs> I have a little paddle, it's so boiling hot. It's so nice. I wish I could see the otters though. No, no otters. Oh. <laughs> yeah, do you think it will make me young again? Uh, I have to say though, this is my favourite part of the walk. I know all this history and everything is all wonderful, but this is a beautiful park. Verulamium Park is absolutely stunning. And yet by report from city and court, the country gets the day. More liquor is spent and better content to drive the cold winter away. To oh, terrific. I mean, look, away. this is just looks like a bunch of stones on the ground, but this is the main gate of the of the city of Verulamium in uh, well I think around 270 AD or so 
Incredible, um, isn't it? I yeah. mean, you can sit, look, there's a main bit of the wall over there, but look, you can make out, if you stand here, you can see the shape here. That was a bit that stuck out. Pedestrians would go through this bit between these two bits, through an archway here, and then, and then the uh, like, like bigger horses and carts and stuff would take animals and things through the middle. And look, oh, you I can see, see yes. so you can see what it would have looked like there. Look, so there were two big arches for animals and things here, there and there. Pedestrians would go through a little kind of arch here. And this road, which was the old, the Watling Street, that went all the way from Dover to London and up to Chester. Also known, famous, because they shot uh, an episode of Grange Hill here as well. <laughs> so which one was it? Which era was that? I think the early 80s. Oh, so Tucker was like one of the... No, I think oh, no. he'd left by then. Oh, Gonch, Gonch Gardner, was it? No, it wasn't. Ziggy Zamo, Reeves. The, the young Zamo. Zamo, yes. Zamo, oh, and Jackie. I mean, I was in love, I was so in love with Jackie. <clears throat> Zamo's girlfriend. What, no, what, why were they here? Oh, just a field trip to St Albans. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that. So, yeah, I mean, if you had a time machine and you had to transport yourself somewhere, you could transport yourself here around 2,000 years ago and just walk through... The gate there. Salve. Salve, Caeculius. <laughs> Puellam uh, est omnibus, not que in Cucina. <laughs> oh, look at that. Look at that, Julian. Lovely sight. Quiet as well, peaceful. No people yelling into mobile phones, spitting, you know, making deliveries. A loaf of bread. Beneath the bough, a cup of wine, a book of verse, and thou, singing in the wilderness. They were doing some digging around here, and they found this amazing mosaic on the floor. Look. Check it out. There was a Roman house here, and they found a hyper course. It's like an underground heating system. And then this was like the floor that was laid on top of it. So you can see the sort of the heating system there. It's probably better than the ones we've got today. I wish we had those in our houses. It was much more efficient. They've got them in Korea and Scandinavia and stuff. Excellent, isn't it? I mean, the amount of effort they put in in those days to make a nice floor. Beautiful. Marvellous. OK, splendid. Look, we've come out of the park here. Yeah, they're at other end and, and just yonder is the, the Verulamium Museum. So if you want to see lots of lovely finds that they found here and uh, things relating to the old Roman town of Verulamium, this was really the, where the forum was. This is the, 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 the center of Roman life in Verulamium. You can even see the corners here of where the basilica was, these kind of gray stones on the ground. So this, this probably was where the main street came through the town. Christmas tree of sorts. Amazing, aren't they? It's just outside St Michael's Church here. St Michael's Church is a really uh, quite a significant Anglo-Saxon building. It's from like the 10th or 11th century. Wonderful place. Anyway, the thing I like about it is the fact that inside is um, a monument for Francis Bacon, Sir Francis Bacon. You know, he was uh, like a scientist, statesman, a Renaissance man. Viscount of St Albans and also Lord Chancellor. He eventually died in 1626. And he's the guy in my Highgate video who, who died in, in, in Highgate there near Pond Square after catching a chill trying to prove that chicken could be frozen. You know, I don't know if you recall, he, he invented the frozen chicken in a way. Um, but he died by trying to prove to his friend that like, he went into the square and he stuffed snow into this chicken to sort of prove that it would preserve the meat. And unfortunately, he caught a chill and died. Anyway, he asked to be buried here. <laughs> I like this. Look at this, wonderful. This is from 140 AD, this Roman theatre. It's different, it's, it's very rare because it's a theatre rather than an amphitheatre. So an amphitheatre is one that goes around in a whole oval. But this is just a D. It's half, a, half of an oval in a way. Circle here. Yeah, where well, that column is. 
What do you reckon? Would be probably where the stage was. And yeah. Like, obviously, this is where all the seating was. I suppose they probably did things like frogs, Aristophanes, that sort of thing. What do you reckon? <laughs> Were they famous then? You can see it's opposite the pillar. Oh, one so pillar still remaining. Place. Yes. Wonderful. And it's oh. so quiet here, but go back and um, it would be absolutely Boo. deafening with... Uh, yeah. Caecilius crossed the road with the slave girls, whereupon he was in a state of being overpowered by the farmers. December is seen apparelled in green and January fresh as May Comes dancing along with a cup and a song to drive the cold winter away Oh, cheers, Simon. This is about 500 years old, this pub. Fantastic. Cheers, everybody. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you like the videos. And uh, don't forget to head over to my website where you can buy my book, find out more about me, and even buy some tasteful merchandise. And if you want to buy Simon's paintings, go to his website, alexanderedward.com. Meanwhile, I'll see you next time. As the young men do best that they can to drive the cold winter away. To drive the cold winter away.